In this video, we're going to see how we can use Excel to verify password complexity requirements. Passwords are a necessary evil, and most of us are saddled with having to make passwords that meet some level of randomness or complexity. Systems need to exist to ensure that we meet those requirements. Although we're going to learn how to build such a system, the system itself is not really the point of this video. The point is to show you how to use several built-in Excel features to create super features, and to showcase strategies to solving complex problems in a very simple way. So we'll start by defining the requirements for an acceptable password. Next, we'll examine a strategy for writing long, complex formulas in a modular way to simplify the design and construction process. We'll use conditional formatting to add a bit of color to our testing process to recognize pass-fail results more easily. And finally, we'll implement our solution using data validation. These are the functions we will use to construct our testing formula. It's good to know how each of these functions work so you can mix and match them for other problem-solving scenarios. Along the way, we'll see a bonus Windows feature that will cut your copy-paste process by 90% when working with multiple items. Let's start with the password complexity requirements. A user's password must have eight characters minimum, one uppercase letter minimum, one lowercase letter minimum, one number minimum, and one symbol minimum. This is the formula that's going to check for all of these requirements. Now this looks absolutely insane. So the first thing we'll do is restructure it so it's easier to read. This is the same formula. I've just added carriage returns to make it more readable. Each line in this AND function is responsible for a separate requirement. So the length function will be in charge of making sure the user has at least eight characters. We have the lower and the upper functions for testing for uppercase and lowercase requirements. And we also have two find functions for locating and detecting numbers and symbols. Now let's go over to Excel and implement this. Now what works very well for me when having to construct a very long, complex formula is to not try to think of the whole formula at once. Instead, break it down into smaller, more modular pieces, and then only attack one piece at a time. That way you're only fighting one battle at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to create five independent formulas, one for each of the password tests. Once we're satisfied that each of those independent formulas is working properly, we'll then use a really cool Windows trick to roll them all up into a single formula. When writing formulas, one of my go-to skills is to name a cell. This way I don't have to use the traditional cell reference. So in every one of these formulas, we're going to be referring to cell D4, but I don't want D4 in my formula. So what we're going to do is we're going to give cell D4 a name. So with my cursor in cell D4, I'm gonna come up here to the name box, erase the original given name, and we're gonna give the cell a new name, password. So now when I write a formula, instead of saying something like equals D4, I can say equals password. And this is going to make my formulas much more readable. So let's start off with the first test, the character length requirement. For this test, we're going to use a length function, and I'm just going to have the length function point to the password cell. Now by itself, this just gives me the number of characters that are in the password, and currently I don't have a password, so there's zero. But if I were to type in something like ABC123, we can see that the password has six characters. Now we're not actually trying to check the number of characters in the password. What we want to do is we want to test that against the requirement. So we're going to go back into the formula and test the detected password length to see if it's greater than or equal to eight. And in this case, we see false because we do not meet the requirement. But if we were to go back into the password and type in a few more characters like XYZ, now it's true because we meet the requirement. So this just tests whether or not we have eight or more characters. Now the test for uppercase letters. Even though we're testing for uppercase letters, we're actually going to use a function called lower. And what lower does is it takes all uppercase letters and turns them into lowercase letters. So if I were to type in equals lower, and then we'll point to the password cell, you can see how it takes all of the uppercase letters in the password and just turns them into lowercase letters. But what we want to do is then compare this against the original password. Because if the original password has uppercase letters and the lowered version does not, that means they are different, which means there are uppercase letters in the password. Now, the thing is we can't just say, take the lower version of password and see if it's equal to the original version of the password. Because notice it says true. It says it's true because this is a case insensitive check. The characters are the same, but it's not detecting the uppercase lowercase difference. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this lower function in an exact function, because exact will test this, the lowered version of the password, against the original password, 
and this is case sensitive. So if I hit check, we can see that the exact test fails because these two are not exact. Now for our purposes, this is a good thing. We want them not to match because that means you've met the uppercase requirement. So we need to flip the true false response on this. So we're gonna wrap this exact lower formula in a not function because we just wanna flip the response. So if I were to type in ABC123, we can see that we don't meet the password length requirement and we don't meet the uppercase complexity requirement. If I type in ABC123XYZ, all lowercase, we meet number of characters, we don't pass the uppercase. If I add one uppercase letter, like an H, now we have an uppercase letter. Now to test for the lowercase letter, we're going to do the exact same thing, but instead of converting the original password to all lowercase letters, we're going to convert the original password to all uppercase letters. So we can just take this formula and just repeat it. The only thing that needs to be changed is instead of using a lower function, we'll use an upper function. Now remember, we're actually trying to test for the exact opposite thing, but we need that upper for comparative purposes. So if we have a lowercase letter, the test is true. If we were to go back to the password and use nothing but uppercase letters, we fail the lowercase test. Now on to testing for the presence of a number. We have a list of numbers in column O, and because I don't want to have to put something like equals O2 through O11, I don't want to write those kinds of things in my formula. I'm going to take these cells that hold the numbers and give them a proper name, and I'll call this number list, or num list for short. So now in my formula, I'll be able to say equals num list, and that's going to look a lot better than O2 through O11. So for the number test, we're going to use the find function to find any of these numbers in the number list to see if those numbers are located in the password. If I close out the formula, we see everything in here is issuing a pound value error. Now the reason for this is, it's actually checking to see is there a zero, is there a one, is there a two, is there a three, and every one of these tests is returning an answer. Now if we were to go in and actually put some numbers in here, so if I did A, B, C, one, two, three, X, Y, Z, we can see that a one was found in the fourth position, a two was found in the fifth position, and a three was found in the sixth position. Just for fun, I'll put an eight on the end of this, and we can see how an eight was found in the 10th position. So this is giving us a list of all of the positions that each of these numbers was located. Now I don't actually care where these numbers are, I just need to know that they exist. So we're gonna go back to the original formula and just count the number of numbers in this list of responses. So we're going to use a count function, and it says I found four numbers. Now again, I don't really care what the numbers are or how many there are. What I need to know is that they just exist. So we're gonna take this and compare it to see if it's greater than zero. So if there's at least one number, it's greater than zero, it's true. If we go back to the password and just put in letters, it's false. But if we add even one number, it's true. So by testing for all the numbers in the password and coming back with that list of discovered locations, we count the locations, compare it to zero. Now all we have to do is the same thing for the symbols. So just like we gave this list a nice name, numlist, here's a list of all of the symbols on the keyboard. Now, of course, if you're not using the keyboard format that I'm using, you would have to substitute these symbols with symbols from your region. But we're gonna take all of these symbols and give them a name, and we'll call this symbol list or sim list. I can take this exact same count find formula and repeat it, but now instead of testing for numbered list, I can test for the symbol list. And right now we're rendering false because we have no symbols. If I were to add a symbol, like let's say a caret, now it's true. So currently our test is satisfying four out of the five requirements because I don't have an uppercase letter. So let's throw one of those in there. We'll do an uppercase R. And now all of our tests are passing. Now just to spice this up visually, let's highlight all of our test results and make them a little more visually exciting with some conditional formatting. So we'll go to conditional formatting, highlight equals to, and I'm gonna say if it equals to true, then I want a green fill. But I'll also say conditional formatting, highlight equals to, if it equals false, then I want a red fill. So now let's give all of our independent tests a thorough vetting. So with no password, I'm failing all of the tests. If I type in one, two, three, four letters, I do have lowercase, but I'm not meeting the number of characters requirement. So I'll do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I meet the number of characters requirement. I meet the lowercase requirement. We'll add some uppercase letters, X, Y, Z. So now we're meeting number of characters, uppercase, lowercase. We'll throw in a number, eight. 
And then finally, we'll add a symbol, parentheses. So we've met all of the tests. Now, if you want to construct these separately in this modular fashion, and maybe you're doing this on another sheet or off to the side somewhere in some hidden column, this is where the story ends because you've performed all of the tests. Now we just need to combine the results together into a single overall true-false response. So if we want to have a cell that just displays the overall pass-fail rate, we can use an AND function and just highlight all of the existing tests. So because each of those tests is true, the entire test is true. If we were to go in and take out one of the requirements like the symbol, if one of those tests fails, the whole test fails. So if I did ABC, it's a fail. If I do ABC123, still a fail. ABC123XYZ, still fails. And it's not until I meet that final last requirement that I pass all the independent tests, which means I pass the ultimate combined test. So this AND statement just looks at the results of the five independent tests. Let's carry over the red-green responses with a little format painter, and we'll just paint these two cells. So for the solution as it stands, we've tested the link, the uppercase, the lowercase, the number, and the symbol. We then examined all of those responses to come up with a single response. Now, if we wanted to use data validation, to then actually control the password input. If we're only using this pass fail as the final arbiter of truth, we could come over here to the password cell. We'll go up to data and then data validation. And we're going to create a custom data validation. The formula for this will be equals and then the cell that holds that combined true false test with the and function. So we'll delete the cell. All of our tests are failing. If we satisfy the number of minimum characters, we get a password requirements failure. I'll add an uppercase letter, still fails. We'll add a number, still fails. And then finally, we'll add some symbols. Everything passes. Now, if you're wondering how I got this nice custom message, back in the data validation section on the error alert sheet, I typed in a custom title and error message here. And that replaces the default error response that nobody's ever gonna understand. So the password cell is looking at the test results in cell L4 to decide whether or not the user has met the requirement. Now there's another way that we can build this solution. If we don't want to have all of this existing somewhere in a spreadsheet, we could actually take each of these individual formulas and combine them into a single test formula that is embedded directly within the data validation tool. That way, none of this has to exist anywhere. Now, as before, I'm going to build this in a cell just for testing purposes, but then I'm going to copy paste that result into the data validation tool, and then I won't need this on sheet test. Now, this is where we get to see a really wonderful Windows feature. And this is a feature that everybody has, but probably don't realize it because the feature is not turned on by default. This feature is known as the clipboard history. To turn on the clipboard history, if you go down to your start button, and just type in the word clip. And what we're looking for is this entry here that says save multiple clipboard items. We'll give that a click. So in this section of Windows, we're going to turn on the clipboard history. Let's go back to Excel. And here's how the clipboard history is going to work. Normally when you do a copy paste, most people use the keyboard shortcuts, control C for copy and control V for paste. But this time, instead of using the control V for paste, we're going to use the Windows V for paste. So the Windows key. So right now, if I do a Windows V, it says my clipboard is empty. So we're going to go to the cell that tests for the password length. I'm going to highlight that formula and do a control C, escape. Now, if I do a Windows V, we can see that formula in our clipboard history. Now, I'm not going to paste it down just yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the next cell that tests for uppercase letters and highlight that formula, control C, copy. Now a Windows V reveals that I've copied two formulas into system memory. I'll do the same thing for the formula that tests for lowercase letters, copy. The formula that tests for numbers, copy. And the formula that tests for symbols, copy. If I do a Windows V, we can see each of these formulas has been copied into the clipboard history. See, the great thing about the clipboard history is I can now paste them back in any order that I want, as many times as I want. I could even come back hours from now and do a Windows V and paste one of these entries. So now to the all-in-one. Originally, we used an AND function to test for each of those independent tests. Well, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use an AND function. But now, for the first test, I'm going to do a Windows V and go point to that length formula, comma. My second test, Windows V, 
This will be the test for the uppercase letters, comma, Windows V, the test for the lowercase letters, comma, Windows V, the test for the numbers, comma, Windows V, the test for the symbols. Close parentheses. Let's pull our formula bar down so we can see this a little bit better. And there's the entire formula in one cell that performs five separate tests. Now, just to make sure it's working, we'll start off with nothing. We fail all tests. I'll type in A, B, C, E, D, E, F, G, H. I don't meet some of the requirements. I have lowercase letters and I meet the character length requirement. I'll add some uppercase letters. I pass the uppercase test. I'll add some numbers. I pass the number test. I'll add some symbols. Now I pass all tests. So this formula is doing the same thing as the five independently tested functions being rolled up into a single AND test. So this is the formula that we want to highlight, Control C for copy. Then we can go to our password cell, go to data validation, we'll go back to settings. But now in the formulas field, instead of pointing to a cell that holds the formula test, I'm going to Control V, and now I've pasted that entire formula into the data validation tool. Hit OK. This is now a self-contained testing environment, and I actually don't need any of this anymore. Now, if I am going to do this in a cell, I'm going to make the formula a little more readable. So I like to go into the formula and do an Alt-Enter, which is like an in-cell carriage return. Add a few spaces just for readability. So Alt-Enter, add some spaces. And this way, if I have to go into the cell and read it, it's a little bit easier to understand. So each row in the AND test is now a separate independent test. So because the data validation tool is actually doing all of the testing, I'm no longer in need of any of these preliminary test columns. So just to make sure, I'll type in ABC. I don't meet the test. ABC123, still don't meet it. ABC123XYZ, still not meeting it. Add some symbols, I meet the requirement. Now you can hide these number and symbol lists, but if you really wanted to take this to the nth degree, you could contain these lists directly within the data validation formula, but I don't recommend it because the formula will become incredibly long and difficult to both read and manage. So if I were doing this, I would just have these on maybe a separate sheet and hide that sheet or put these in some faraway columns that you can then just hide. So that's our password complexity test. But remember the test really wasn't the point. The test was to learn a whole new series of functions like exact and upper, lower, find, count, length, not, and, how to combine those into a super formula, and then use that super formula within a feature like data validation. Don't forget when building formulas of this complexity, for most people, it's going to be better to build it in pieces, build it modularly, test those pieces independently, and then once you're satisfied with the tests and combine all those formulas into a single large test formula. So let me know in the comments what you think about any of these things. And if you have any recommendations for a future video, put that down. I'd love to put something together for you. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate your time. And remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.